everybody loved him. I mean, it's exciting. You have a real winner with him. Frankly, a standing ovation said it all. Because I'm a great example of somebody who got to live his dream. My dad sold vegetables on a corner grocery store, and I got to race in Formula One. It's a sport that pushes people right out to the edges and to the boundaries of what might be possible. In the 80s, very good teams could win races and win world championships. In the 90s, it shifted from good to great. It went from great to extraordinary. And I want to give you a bit of a feel for what extraordinary looks like. Hands up, has anybody here ever driven at 200 miles an hour? Intentionally? <laughs> but to give you an idea, 200 miles an hour, you'll cover the full length of a football field every second. And do you know today, it's not even considered fast. Do you know today, you're not even allowed past your rookie test at the Indy 500 if you can only do 200 miles an hour. You're considered a hazard. The most fascinating aspect of television broadcasting for me was the research. But do you know when I researched the number of teams who ever actually get to go to celebrate on the victory podium in my sport at the high levels, I realized the number is so unbelievably small. And I asked a really simple question. Why? Why is the number so small? Did they communicate differently? Did they plan differently? Did they execute differently? Did they have a different product? Were they better under pressure? I was... You know, when I went to Indy first, and they were doing 200 miles an hour, I couldn't actually do it. I couldn't go that fast. I walked down to a good friend of mine, Mario Andretti, and asked him to please tell me what I didn't understand about this technique. He said, tell your brain to tell your foot not to come off the gas pedal until after you turn the steering wheel into the corner. I see the first corner coming. I remember exactly what he said to me. And then the corner's getting really close. And the closer I got, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to do what he said. And then I got really close and I suddenly thought, do you think he told me the truth? <laughs> I hunch down, I turn in flat. Then I back off the gas just to balance the car a bit. Much faster corner entry speed. I did 202 miles an hour right there because I learned this new technique. And of course, I thought he told me the technique to help me. And then I realized he told me the technique to help him. Can you imagine open wheel racing cars running at 200 miles an hour and a rookie making unusual or abrupt moves? It could be catastrophic. And then I realized the speed we were running I trusted my life to Mario. Then I realized trust is the very foundation of the great teams who get to go celebrate on that place called the Victory Podium. And you never build trust faster in our business than sharing what you know with the people beside you to help them get better. Now, when I say that, Sometimes people get a bit scared. They think, we're already going as fast as we can. We're already shoving as much into every day as we can. But remember, in my business, it's not about going faster. It's about being faster. And being faster has two key elements. Right people in the right positions doing the right things. But an even more important element of being faster in my business is the ability to remove the speed bumps that might be slowing you down. I want to share with you some of the skill sets that answers that question, why? Do you think it's a coincidence that when I do my television interviews on the front of the starting grid, I will inevitably see the best painted, best sponsored, best prepared cars right up the front of the grid. But this group of people here knows that the job list and the checklist has been taken care of as well, or maybe even better, than everybody else that they might be in competition with. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that when I move to the middle of the grid, I see some pretty good teams there, but these teams are already looking forward to teams of people who've already demonstrated they've done a better job. The race hasn't even started yet. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that when I move to the back of the grid to record television interviews, 
I no longer see as many immaculately dressed mechanics. And if you look at this picture here, there's a mechanic on his hands and knees. He's got tools in his hands. He's got the rear wing off the car. He's actually working on the gearbox on the starting grid of the largest single day attended sporting event in the world. Now, do you think it's a coincidence? The fallout and the failure rate at the Indy 500 also starts from the back of the grid because it is directly proportional to the preparation they put in before they go against the competition. As regards your preparation for what you do every day, where do you think you are on the starting grid of the race you are now in every day? What am I going to do here? I said, I can't make a piss up and run to the porta potty in the middle of the Indy 500. I'm going to be in here for another two and a half hours. Maybe I'll just go ahead and go in the seat, because in two and a half hours it'll all be dried up. No one will ever know. <laughs> so I did. It was a wonderful relief. The only problem was my engine blew up two laps later. <laughs> What got you to where you are today may not be good enough to get you where you want to go. And when our teams get pushed to the edge, sometimes they're asked to go beyond their best. You may be asked to go beyond your best in the years to come. A team or a company only becomes fast when enough people in it become fast. Now, if you are asked to stretch and grow in the next coming quarter, year, two years, five years, and if you don't like it, if it gets uncomfortable, do you think you could get comfortable being uncomfortable? Because the greatest power we all possess is the power to choose. But if you made the choice to add to your giftedness, you can't help but get better. And I promise you, a better you makes a better us. How fast can you get fast? As fast as you want. So I want you to leave here, go out the doors, and be extraordinary for the years to come. Thank you all so much. Thank you. 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 greatest power we all possess is the power to choose.